One of the incredible stories of survival was that of John Duncan, who was saved by firefighters after a tweet from his daughter. And John Duncan joins me now from Casino. John, thank you very much for joining us after what you've gone through over the last few days. Can I ask you firstly, how are you and your partner Cass doing? Cass and I are doing well, well thanks Lisa. We just appreciate we're in our big shed hiding from the fire. We can't get hurt. <laughs> but only they you... come to get us and they got us out of that shed. John, can you tell us, we heard from Carol what went on and how frantic she was trying to make sure that the firefighters got to you. But when did you know you were in real trouble? Can you tell us what was happening f for you? I'll tell you the whole, I'll tell you the story, Lisa, as we saw it. The fire, there was a lot of smoke came <clears throat> and then there was a few embers coming around. I looked down across the road from us, there was a lot of long grass and it's behind the church. And I thought, oh, dear, 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 don't tell me the church is going to go like, you know. And I said to Cass, my partner, we'd, we'd moved out into the big set because I moved out of the house, I left my wallet behind, I left a few other, a few other things behind and uh, walk and stick, the whole bit. And I thought, we'll get out of here. And we'd put the hose out the day previous because we'd had experience with the woods fires in Canberra which we never got burnt down there. And uh, so we said, we'll go and sit in the shed. So I was sitting in the shed and a few little leaves come across and lit one fence up. And I said, oh, that's good. We need to replace that fence. Then the next minute, front fence is on fire. Oh, that fence wasn't real good either. We've got to fix that. Looked across, the smoke coming out of the garage. The cats had run around putting out little spot fires in dead grass. And uh, I said, this is, this is not getting any better. And uh, I looked across, the smoke coming out the garage, smoke coming out the house. And I thought, well, we'll just sit here in the big shed, we're safe. It's a big shed, it's all still, it can't burn. Dear, dear, oh dear, it's got hot in there. Well, Carol made a, a call to the uh, Rob Rogers, I think his name is, with the fire service mob. He rang the Rapful School, and they, the volunteer firemen and the policemen came over, and there we were in the shed. and. Uh, they got us out of there and took us over to the school where we met all the other unfortunate people. We were all sheltered in the um, in school library or somewhere, I think, yeah. And John, was That's there a happened. point where you and Cass thought you weren't going to make it out? Yes. We had had little masks on and we sat with one another and we thought, well, excuse me, um, this is it. They got there and got us out. Which we're very thankful. Sorry. There's no yeah, need yeah, to apologise, John. Goes, but, but see, there's others. There's others in the in the same situation as oh, we were. But we were just that little bit out play our place. Way burn. Let's get in the big shed. We'll be safe. Blah 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 blah. No, don't work that way. But, but just to lead on from that, <coughs> that was on the Tuesday. Uh, people went out there yesterday, and. The house, another house that was burnt down, had still. This is Tuesday night. All this happened. They went out there yesterday, and there's still little patches of flame under the house. Now, in they went into our house, one of the better word, and there was little dolls, baby, you know, the baby little kids have. And the son went in. He picked up the two arms. This was just off the little doll porcelain, uh, and he couldn't hang on them. They were still that hot. So that's how that's how intense the heat was out there, and it was very, very, very hot when we were, as Carol put it, cowering in our shed. But so pleased to get out. John, you talked about losing the walking stick. I'm sure there are a lot of things that are probably irreplaceable for you. Everything. Everything. Photos of Cass and I, our, our families and my mum, um, that's all gone. But, uh, even my bottom teeth. <laughs> Sorry about that. But uh, it, it's, it's, it's nothing, it's gone. Totally, everything's gone. Cass and I, you know, she had things of her people, I had things of my people, and then all of a sudden, you're on your own. But as we said to another one another, we've, we've still got one another, and that, that's it. I, I, I haven't even got my own clothes on, I'm going to go and buy some clothes now. Cass is the same, she's, nah, not a pleasant experience. Are you going to rebuild there, John? Uh, Lisa, yeah, it is, our, it, it, it is our intention to... We love the community out there. It's a fantastic little place. We went there 16 years ago 
And it's only a little place. <clears throat> they made us so welcome, and we've just enjoyed every minute of it being out there. And when, <clears throat> when the dust all settles, and fortunately we, we're insured, <clears throat> get it all cleared, and yes, we will rebuild where we are because we don't want to go anywhere else now. It's just a top little spot. They can be a fantastic community out there. Everyone wants to help one another, you know? And uh, yeah, that's it for us, yeah. We will rebuild. We've been talking about the sad news about the loss of two people out there. I understand that you knew them, John. That must be devastating to hear that news. Yes, yeah, uh, we knew both of them. And uh, I was a bit surprised when I heard it and I thought, oh, dear, dear, dear. But both Robert and Gwenny, as we know them, um, yeah, it's, just, it's, un it's unbelievable. It's, uh, you know, yeah. it's one of those times you just thank your lucky stars that we're still here. <clears throat> and, uh, sorry about the throat, it's a bit croaky from the smoky, but that's the way it is. Are you confident that the community can rebuild? I know you've said you'll, you'll stick around, but it's been through an incredible experience. The community will rebuild, Lisa. Um, I've got no doubt about that because, as I say, it's a fantastic community and they, they, they will build. I don't know how many houses have gone in, raffle 10, 15, I don't really know. I know one one person, no, he said, that's it, I'm out of here, like, you know. But no, we'll stay. And I haven't spoke to other people who have lost their houses, but uh, it, it's just something there that, they, yeah, we'll all stay. That's the way I see it. And John, I know you wanted to give a big shout out to the volunteers as well who are still working around those communities. I do, the volunteers that are out there, it's, it's incredible. I, I don't know how many people there was out there, but uh, they, they, they were dog tied too, because they've been working for hours and hours and hours. And you've, you've seen them come into where we were and they get a, a, a little bottle of cold water, a little plate of sandwiches and some other stuff like, you know, and they're still at it all the time. The, I haven't, we haven't been back yet. We might get out there today to have a look. I don't. Well, I think we're allowed to get out there. But, so everything's everything's just burnt. That's it. And that's all. It's one of those old stories, you know. Phoenix and the ashes. Well, that's all we can do. And once again, I, I do like to thank all those the volunteers that were there and they were just helping and trying. I was watching them. The fire left. Went and sat down. Watched the house burn. That's pretty crook to start with. And the fire's creeping across the lawn to the bloke next door. And all of a sudden they've got hoses out and they actually saved his house from going up, like, you know. So you got our house was burnt and then his house got saved. And I think there's another couple down further. They all gone. But uh, they're actually fantastic. That's all I can say. Beautiful. And John, we think you're pretty fantastic too. Please pass on our regards to Cass. I really appreciate you talking to us after what you've been through. It's a pleasure, Lisa, and I will pass my your thanks on to Cass, and thank you for trying to help us very much. Thank you.